Hey guys, it's uh, Chuck. Uh, welcome back to my channel. My name's Chuck, and uh, my channel's Outside Screwball. I guess as you know, since you you're here and you found me, um, just uh, second part of uh, Hangover, Hangover Two. Um, it's been hanging on, and I got things hanging around my shop. Um, uh, one of the uh, one of the viewers. He lives uh, somewhere in the area here. His channel name is Swarf Rat. Uh, he goes by Dave, and I haven't ran into him yet, but I've been told he's been wandering around asking where his coveralls are. I, 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 he's never been here before, but he's been outside looking for his coveralls. Uh, I don't know what's going on, uh, uh, but I'll, I'll try to get a hold of him and figure it out. Um, other than that, uh, been hectic life here at home still. Some of you guys know what's going on and uh, that uh, things are good and uh, we'll continue on with uh, the review of the Aloris uh, catalog. Um, let me let me grab something real quick. Uh, you guys you guys might remember uh, in one of my earlier videos I did a uh, I built a wrench that uh, goes into the back of the spindle on the lathe for a stop that sits behind the chuck. Um, well, I, I pulled this out because I want to show you something in the Loris catalog, which I never knew was there. Um, so uh, let's, um, I'll, I'll stop the camera and uh, we'll move on and uh, I'll get that Loris book out and uh, we'll take a look at some of the items in there. There are some pretty neat neat items that I never had seen um, and I'll have to do a little research and see if some of the things are still available. Alright, be back with you here shortly. So, hang around. Okay guys, uh, here's the Aloris catalog, uh, paper catalog, and uh, use my scale uh, here to uh, point things out. Oh, you notice my scale got longer somehow. Hmm, I wonder how something made it longer. Well, anyway, uh, up here it's written a uh, date. Uh, somebody date stamped it, uh, and it's uh, 1967, March 7th, 1967 at 928 in the morning. Anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the items in here. And uh, the first thing I thought would be interesting to look at, and I'm going to try to do this the best I can, um, so that you guys can see it. Um, Allure's Universal Lace Spindle and Collet Stop. Um, I had never seen seen this um, before, and um, uh, I should have probably studied better here for a second. But uh, let's see. Consists of consists of body with adjustable locking jaws, consists of threaded and tapered pin with square shank, spring-loaded locking ball, short extension bar, long extension, bar to use with collets, socket T-handle, removable cup to fit short and long extension bars with machining tubing. Um, so this goes into your spindle. You get up here a little closer and you can see the uh, the adjustment there where it would uh, expand to lock into the spindle. Um, some of the things here, completely self-centering, only a few seconds to install, greater rigidity, ensures duplication, can't vibrate or lose position, and kind of rejection rejection cuts to it to a minimum. Uh, Loris's new lathe accessory is designed. Anyway, interesting, um, back then in 67, Whopping price of thirty-eight dollars for the small one and ninety-eight dollars for uh, the larger version. Um, and I did a quick search on my computer, um, which uh, I bumped the page here. See if it'll go back, and uh, it does come up. It does come up on the computer um, that it's still a item that. Uh, that they uh, that they sell. And of course, like usual, my camera won't 
won't uh, make an adjustment there. Uh, today's price for the SOO uh, is $237, and it's in stock. So after, uh, let's see, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 10s, eh, 50 years, $200 more. That's not too bad, I guess, huh? 40 years, whatever it is, I can't count. But anyway, um, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, I never... I never had seen it, but you know that I got to just point out something about paper catalogs are nice to go through. Um, I know today we all go online and you, and you have to sit there and try to page online and look at stuff on the screen. Sometimes very much quicker to get to it, um, but there's nothing like just sitting down and, and reading a, reading through a catalog. Um, let me uh, let me go back to another page here on the uh, catalog that I thought was interesting. Oh. Yeah, here was something uh, before I do that. Let's let's look at this one. Uh, and I have to look. I don't know if this one. I didn't search this one yet. Um, a Loris guide stop. So this one would, if you've ever noticed on an Loris tool post, on the back side of it there is a threaded hole, and so they had they have a stop here, a guide stop that attaches to that it's adjustable sideways it's adjustable in its depth and it's got a little locking ring to lock it and then right here in the tip uh, i guess you can see that so it says set up multiple piece operations allures guide stop simple efficient easy to operate instantly mounts to an allures tool post fully adjustable five ways ball bearing can't mar your surfaces so here there's a ball bearing that's going to run on your surface there uh, and then you can pull it out and, and hit it um, let, let me uh, let's search that real quick I'm, I'm just curious let me uh, pause the camera for a second okay well I'm back and uh, searched it and uh, it, that part uh, that part number is no good so um, doesn't look like an item I've never seen one and not that I'm the uh, expert in any kind of tooling uh, but I, I never come across it for all the all the different uh, things that I've looked at and watched um, back then in 67 a whopping $18 okay let me, let's uh, let's go back here and uh, Bear with me here for a second. Um, so um, here I marked a couple of ones that I had never seen before. Again, um, they have a whole array of uh, tool posts here that they show. I did do some search on some, and the <clears throat> and they are still existing. Uh, again, I had never seen this guy right here, and hopefully that focuses. Um, a multi says so uh, I'll read it for you real quick new Aloris uh, micrometer adjustment tool holder for multiple surface forming and turning tool bit alignment is accomplished by slight tightness of the front lock screw the tool bits can then be set quickly and accurately with the micrometer so it had a built in micrometer um, we'll have to look in the book and see if uh, if that's uh, what the price was on that and if it's still available um, they had another one here uh, micro adjust uh, multiple purpose tool holder design with two cutting tools for simultaneous step turning and axial repositioning graduated dial screw is designed to provide direct readings to a half of uh, half of a tenth Slide dune travels longitudinally and will provide. So pages 10, 12, 12 and, and 13. So we'll have to go look at that. And uh, uh, some other units here. This is, uh, this is similar to the one I think that Adam, uh, that I, his uh, dad had, that Adam sent me. Um, and the other one that I marked over here. Uh, I'd never seen this one either. 
again, like I said, I'm not the expert. Uh, number nine, multi-purpose holder. Uh, ideal for multiple operations. This is something that uh, Tom Lipton probably has built, uh, I would bet. Left or right turning and left and right turning and facing. We're close to tail stock, form tool, gang tool setups, illustrated typical gang setup in part produced. Extremely useful for short, heavy duty boring. Um, so another one that I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so let's uh, let me stop the camera and we'll go into the into the into the uh, catalog here. And I hope this is staying in focused and hope you guys are still awake and hanging around. Okay, guys, I'm back. Well, I did a search on I did a search on the micro adjust uh, unit number 18, and and that's not on their website any further. Um, so let me. Uh, let me page through here and show you some other things. I'm not even going to search them because I don't think they're they're quite unique, and I don't think they're available anymore. Uh, here's one: uh, New Alors Micro Adjust Slide Turning Holder, and as you can see, um, I pull the book, book here. As you see, there's your dovetail, and you've got uh, a dial to adjust. Um, and it looks like a, a, a vernier scale there. Um, quite unique. It's, it's not, I don't think it's around anymore. Um, there's another picture of it. Um, again, it's probably something Tom Lipton's built. Um, pretty unique though. Uh, Here's a uh, here's another one, uh, New Alors Universal Tool Post. So um, this one actually has uh, the ability uh, cross slide dovetail can easily be removed. Um, so it's just a unique arrangement. Three identical dovetails provide a new dimension in tool post versatility. Each dovetail can be locked and independently locked independently by an Acme threaded bolt. Holders have individual height adjustments to ensure positive tool alignment. Cross slide dovetail is ideal for holders with boring tools. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, thought that was uh, pretty interesting. Um, it's a picture of it. Um, there's another picture of it with the uh, different accessories. Moving on, um, here's one, uh, the Aloris, Alora Bars, and uh, I guess this is, a, I think that's a Cat 40 is what it's called, but here's one uh, that's a standard, and it uh, actually has a dial screw like a, uh, like a boring head, where you can adjust the, uh, the unit. Uh, both graduated dial screws are designed to provide direct readings on diameter to half a tenth. Each cartridge can be adjusted independently. See diagram. Um, doubt that, that that guy is still available. Um, what was its price back in the day? Eh, two hundred bucks. Two two seventy. There's one for three forty. Um, hate to see what that thing would cost today. Uh, Here's a cartridge boring bar, uh, another one. Uh, what did that guy cost back in the day? Replacement parts. Yeah, replacement parts for $14, but yeah, I don't see the price. And uh, one more, here's another unique thing, the Aloris, Alora Turn, a universal steadying attachment for centerless, one pass, turning, boring, facing, drilling, and centering. The Allure Turn is provided with round hex or square bushings, which make possible a variety of operations with a wide selection of stock sizes and shapes. Yada, yada, yada. See, quite a, quite a unique uh, item there. So, anyway, if you guys are still awake and still hanging around, um, I think I'll stop there, but uh, 
quite a unique, uh, unique uh, catalog from the day. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at that. It'd be interesting some of the feedback or some of you guys maybe have uh, any of these items uh, sitting in your drawer, in your tooling drawer. All right, uh, we'll be back here shortly. Hey guys, I thought I'd show you uh, uh, kind of a bounce off of uh, what Tom was talking about on his channel, Ox Tool. He was talking about uh, setting the tool height on the lathe, and I just thought I'd show you a couple things that uh, I have. Um, one is uh, this little I beam. Um, this is kind of a follow up. I saw it on Keith Fenner using something like this, and I have to tell you, I tried. Uh, cutting it parallel and I kept goofing it up and the first time I went over to Tom's shop I showed it to him and um, a couple three minutes later on his mill he showed me what I was doing wrong and uh, got the two sides parallel but anyway this one sits across uh, I've got it marked uh, two inch seven hundred thousandths and just as Tom uh, taught me um, same thing use a scale and I can set my tool height um, Oops, didn't mean to touch the camera there. Uh, prior to that, um, I had made this little guy. Um, it's uh, an import square. Uh, there was an extra one I had. And then uh, added a, a slot in it and a little arm. Um, not my design. This came off of frets.com, uh, Frank Ford. Uh, if you've ever been to Hibbs' website, it's uh, just chalked full of all sorts of projects. I've copied a bunch of them. Uh, anyway, th this one has uh, some merit. Uh, it sets on the actual uh, compound, or compound or cross slide? Cross slide. And anyway, um, it has the ability to reach. Uh, I think that shows there in the, in the uh, yeah, it shows there. And um, the, the merit of that is dependent upon where the tool post is uh, located. Um, uh, you can reach, you can reach in any direction, um, and check check your uh, tool height. So it's just another one I have there. Uh, fun little project if you got an extra square. Um, okay, I thought I'd just show that. Um, I like the one that Tom built today. That was pretty cool. Um, Where do you want me to hang these? Uh, you can hang it right there on the door. Oh shit, let's see if we can take a peek. Holy moly. Let me let me grab the camera. Oh. Sorry guys. Hey guys, I thought we'd better talk about welding safety. Um, when you're welding, of course, you want a very good helmet. Um, you need to have gloves for protection, and you need to have some sort of fireproof uh, jacket, uh, flame retardant. Uh, it's so easy to, to uh, catch your clothes on fire from slag or from sparks. So, and uh, this keeps you covered up from any, uh, any issues with um, uh, burning also so you got to make sure you cover up all the way um, so you can't you can't you can't leave these guys out you got to cover up and make sure everything's protected okay that's your welding safety tip for the day catch you guys soon <laughs>